Abul Ala Maududi, born in 1903 and died in 1979. If the 19th century was the age of European domination of the Muslim world, then the 20th century must be considered the period when the Muslims finally woke up from sleep and began to liberate their lands from foreign occupation. At the height of European colonisation, Muslim leaders and the people channelled all their energy in one direction, namely the liberation of their countries from European colonial rule. But following the departure of the British, French, Italians and other European colonial powers from the Muslim world, a powerful and pertinent debate took place in all the Muslim countries concerning their political and constitutional features. The secular, liberal Muslim political elites favoured a Western-style political and constitutional arrangement. Others, on the other hand, argued that a socialist model of political governance and economic management was a more suitable option. While the Islamists championed the need for a political framework based on their understanding and interpretation of Islamic principles, after decades, if not centuries, of European political economic hegemony, the debate concerning the future direction of Muslim countries raged across the Islamic world, providing a perfect opportunity for Muslims to develop a system of political governance and economic management based on Islamic principles and practices. One such Islamic scholar and activist contributed more to this debate than probably any other Muslim thinker or reformer of his generation. And his name was Abu Ala Maududi of Pakistan slash India. Sayyid Abu Ala Maududi, better known as Molana Maududi, was born in a town of Aurangzabad in the Indian state of Hyderabad, located in present day. Adhra Pradesh. His father, Sayyid Ahmad Hassan, was a lawyer by profession who claimed to be a descendant of the Prophet through a chain of Indian Sufi luminaries, including Khawaja Qutbuddin Maudud, who was affiliated with the prominent Chishtiya Sufi order. Born and brought up in a family where learning, personal piety, and devotion to Sufism was valued and respected, young Maududi received his early education at home from his father. When he reached school age, he enrolled in the Madrasa Fokaniya, a local seminary, to pursue traditional religious education. Although Sayyid Ahmad Hassan himself had received a largely Western education at the Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College, present day Aligarh Muslim University, founded by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan back in 1877 and qualified as a lawyer. He encouraged his young son to become an alim, a traditional Islamic scholar. As a bright and gifted student, Maududi successfully completed his studies at the Madrasa al fokaniya before joining the Dar al an Islamic college in Hyderabad, for further education in Urdu, Arabic, and traditional Islamic sciences. But his further education was interrupted at the age of 17 when his father suddenly died in 1920. Sayyid Ahmad Hassan's mystical tendency, coupled with his ascetic ways, contributed to his family's economic difficulties. And after his father's death, Maududi was forced to abandon his studies and work to earn a living. According to Maududi's biographer, he acquired a powerful command of Urdu and Arabic and became sufficiently familiar with traditional Islamic sciences to pursue his own study and research. At the same time, he began to write articles and essays on different aspects of Islam with unusual clarity and vision. His knowledge of current affairs and his awareness and understanding of the problems which confronted the Indian Muslims at the time enabled him to secure his editorship of the local Muslim newspaper. He then became editor of the more prominent Al Jamiyat, the official publication of Jamiyat Al Ulama Al Hind the National Islamic Umbrella Organization which represented the Indian Muslims at the time. His stint as editor of these publications enabled Maududi to polish his writing skills, earn a decent income, and also acquire a better understanding of Indian politics and public affairs. And during this period, he also composed scores of articles wherein he delineated the Islamic concept of jihad, struggle, so as to clarify 
prevailing misconceptions about this important Islamic obligation. These articles were later collected and published under the title of Al Jihad fil Islam War and Peace in Islam in 1930. Following his resignation as editor of Al Jamiat in 1928, Madhudi left Delhi and moved to Hyderabad, where he continued his literary activities, writing and translating books from both Arabic and Persian into Urdu, under the supervision of eminent Islamic scholars like Abdul Majid Daryabadi and Sayyid Manazir Ahsan Jilani. During this period, he also composed his Risalat i Diniyat towards understanding Islam a small but popular treatise on fundamental Islamic beliefs and practices. By the time Madhudi had completed his book in 1932, his understanding of and approach to Islam had shifted considerably. As a journalist and editor of Al Jamiat, he was clean-shaven and wore Western clothes, but now he grew a beard and adopted a revivalist approach to Islam. Convinced that the Indian Muslims were facing considerable political challenges from the British elites as well as the Hindus' masses, who responded to the ever-changing social-political situation by promoting Islamic knowledge and raising awareness of Indian political affairs. And with this in mind, he took charge of the Tarjima al-Quran, interpretation of the Quran, in 1932. And this was a monthly Islamic journal which was originally founded and published by an independent Muslim scholar in Hyderabad. Through this journal, which only had a couple of hundred subscribers at first, but later acquired a much wider readership, Madhudi established himself as a prominent exponent of Islam in India. As a prolific writer, he contrib contributed most of the articles in the journal, and his concise, pertinent and refreshing approach to Islamic political, legal and social issues instantly won him much praise from other renowned Islamic scholars and thinkers like Sir Muhammad Iqbal, Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi, Mufti Muhammad Kifayatullah and Sayyid Manazir Asan Jilani. This convinced Maududi that his intellectual efforts were having the desired effect and thus he continued to champion the cause of the Indian Muslims and write prolifically. Maududi continued to publish the Tarjama from Hyderabad until 1937 when Sir Muhammad Iqbal invited him to move to Patan court located in East Punjab, India, and help him to establish an Islamic research centre there. After his move to Patan court in 1938, he continued to edit and publish the Tarjama and also began to work on the proposed research centre with the help and assistance of some of India's prominent Islamic scholars. He eventually established the centre and began to supervise its activities and in his spare time he continued to write prolifically and all aspects of Islam. However, over time he felt that conducting research and writing books alone was unlikely to lead to political reform and social change, rather a combination of social political activism underpinned by the enduring values and principles of Islam was more likely to bring about such change. With the active support of a number of leading Indian Islamic scholars, in 1941 he formally launched the jamaat -e islami the Islamic Organisation, an Islamic political party, in order to reform Indian politics, culture and society in the light of Islam. As an Islamic scholar and writer, Maududi, monthly articles in the Tarjima coupled with his books and treaties soon captured the imagination of both the traditional Islamic scholars as well as the modern, educated Indian Muslims. However, as the founder and chief Amir of the jamaat -e islami he was still a marginal political figure. But the situation changed radically following the formation of Pakistan as an independent country in 1947. Along with his close friends and supporters, Madhudi left India in favour of Pakistan and tried to establish an Islamic political, economic and cultural order there. Although the Tarjima became the chief vehicle for the exposition and dissemination of his political religious ideas and thoughts. It was the formation of Jamaat-e Islami in 1941 and his subsequent migration to Pakistan in 1947, which provided the ideal opportunity for him to engage in politics on a full-time basis for the first time. 
Prior to his arrival in Pakistan, Maududi was known primarily as an Islamic scholar and writer, and his Jamaat Islami was viewed as yet another religious organisation. But after his move to Pakistan, he became an active politician, and the Jamaat Islami also became known as a political party, which actively campaigned for an Islamic constitution, as well as a need to implement the Sharia in that country. During this period, Maududi wrote prolifically on Islamic political, legal and constitutional matters, hoping to influence both the politicians and the masses in the devising and implementation of a system of political governance, economic policies and legal framework which was compatible with Islamic principles and values. Unlike his eminent contemporaries, Abul Hassan Ali Nadwi of India, also known as Ali Mian, Maududi did not believe in the pursuit of intellectual activity minus social political activism. Indeed, influenced by the reformist ideas and thoughts of prominent Islamic thinkers like Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Ahmad Sirhindi, Shah Waliullah, and Sir Muhammad Iqbal, Maududi combined theology with politics, spirituality, and social activism and philosophy with a need for cultural renewal. And although his political activism landed him in prison on more than one occasion. He remained as firm and steadfast as ever. Islam in the broadest sense, argued Maududi, was an all-inclusive religion and ideology, and thus there was no room for compartmentalization of politics from Islam, economics from justice, and freedom from responsibility. Rather, he considered Islamic teachings to be holistic and all-encompassing, covering all aspects of human life, in a structurally interconnected and interdependent way, emanating from one divinely inspired source, namely the Qur'an, and the authentic Sunnah, the normative practices of the Prophet. Thus he believed there was no room for the depoliticization of Islam. Accordingly, Maududi and his Jamaat Islami fully embraced social political activism. Indeed, they believed this to be one of the most effective ways to bring about political change and social reform in Muslim societies, especially at a time when the rulers deliberately chose to sideline or undermine Islamic principles concerning political governance, economic management, educational policies, social justice, law and order, and cultural development and social morality. As an Islamic ideologue and author, Maududi wrote more than 100 books and treaties on all aspects of Islam and his exposition of Islam as a religion and a complete way of life was always clear and comprehensive. Some of his most important books and treaties were the Khutbat, Collection of Lectures, Tafimat, Elucidation, Tajdeed al-Iya al-Din, A History of Islamic Revivalist Movements, Al-Jihad fil Islam, War and Peace in Islam, Risala i Diniyat, Towards Understanding Islam, Sud, Usury, Urda, the veil, Rasail or Masail, questions and answers, Tankihat, explications, Islam ka nimaz ihiyat, the Islamic way of life, Islam ka nazariya isiyasi, the p- Islamic political theory. However, it is his tafam i Quran, towards understanding the Quran, a voluminous Urdu translation and commentary on the Quran, which is to say considered to be one of the most influential works. In this vast, unusual commentary, he tried to explain the raison d'etre of the Quranic revelation in a clear and logical way. As a politician and activist, Madhudi not only tried to highlight the fundamental teachings of the Quran for the benefit of scholars as well as lay people, but also went out of his way to explain how one could translate the message of the Quran into one's daily life. Maududi was not interested in intellectual discussions or debates for his own sake, but rather he was motivated by the desire to reform Muslim societies in the image of the divine message, and in so doing, he hoped to improve people's quality of life. However, according to Maududi's critics, such as Abu Hassan Ali Nadwi, he emphasized the social political dimension of Islam at the expense of its moral and spiritual dimension. That's to say, his critics have argued that his books read more like a manual for social political action rather than a work of Islamic wisdom and spirituality. 
In the final analysis, however, Maududi was more successful as a writer of Islamic ideologue than he was as a politician and activist. But the jamaat e islami party which he founded and led for more than three decades continued to operate in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka to this day. Though the party has not been as successful as Maududi and his associates had anticipated, its influence is still quite considerable in the subcontinent. By contrast, Maududi's writings have been translated and published in all the major languages of the world and is today considered to be one of the most widely read Muslim authors of modern time. He died in hospital in Buffalo, New York at the age of 75 and was buried in front of the, his house in Lahore. Prior to his death, Maududi received the prestigious King Faisal International Award for his service to Islam. Likewise, his religious ideas and thoughts have influenced scores of prominent modern Muslim scholars and thinkers including Sayyid Qutb, Muhammad al-Ghazali, Abul Hassan Ali Nadwi, Muhammad Manzoor Numani, Amin Asan Ilahi, Ghulam Azam, Israr Ahmad, Wahiuddin Khan and Khurshid Ahmed, among others.